Let's factor completely the degree 5 polynomial f of x equals 2x to the 5th plus 5x to the 4th minus 8x cubed minus 14x squared plus 6x plus 9. If we look at variations of signs, I see one variation here and two variations, a uh, second one right there. So the variation of signs tells me that there's going to be either two or zero positive roots. If you switch the signs for the, uh, for the odd degree powers, so you get negative, positive, negative right there, you're going to see one variation, two variations, three variations, and you see that the variations often add up to the degree there. And so the negative variations is going to be three or one. And so with this in mind, our, we, we, have, we have two positive roots or none. So there could be none if we look for them. Um, when it turns out, when we look at the negative roots, there's going to be three or one uh, negative root. And so the thing is, we do have a guaranteed negative root. But the, the one thing you have to remember about Descartes' rules, Descartes' rule applies to reals. It doesn't actually guarantee that there's going to be a... Um, there's doesn't going to be guaranteed there's going to be a rational negative root. It could be a real root. And so we have to be careful and we can only use this so much, right? This does make me kind of think that I'm more likely to find a negative root if I go looking for those first. Uh, it's Again, it's not a requirement, but, you know, you, you might want to consider it looking for negatives first. Uh, but in this situation, I don't see much benefit of doing one over the other. Because uh, honestly, there could be two real, two positive roots, only one negative root. So there might be more positives. So this one's kind of a, a mixed bag right there. Descartes' rule sometimes is. I really like Descartes' rule when it tells me that there's no positive roots or no negative roots. That can be very helpful. And that's when it's the most helpful. So if we look at the rash, using the rational roots theorem, we have to look at the factors of 9 and divide them by the, the factors of 2. And so the possible rational roots we see here, so we're going to get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9, the factors of 9. We have to divide those by 1, which we already did. We have to divide those also by 2. So we get plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 3 halves, and plus or minus 9 halves. Now, there's one thing I want to tell you here. If your leading coefficient is anything other than 1, one of two things have to happen. Either every coefficient is divisible here by 2, which it's not, or we have a root which is not a whole number. Um, so that means we're going to have to look beyond 1, 3, and 9 to find the roots of this thing. Now, it very likely could be that one of these fractions turns out to be a root, or it could actually be that we have some non-real or irrational roots. Those are possibilities as well. So if you abhor fractions, uh, the point is we're going to have to probably try them eventually. But I can understand that we might hesitate to do it at first. Um, so let's try, for example, let's try looking for, um, let's try one. I like to try one. Uh, one sort of a good start, I think, and we can see where it goes from there. So I mean, after all, after all, one kind of is in the middle, like because three and nine are bigger than one, so is uh, nine halves and three halves. So we want to have a smaller. And I, again, I'm trying to avoid the fractions here. Let's just try one, see what happens. So we get two, five, negative eight, negative fourteen, six, and nine. We are going to divide it by one, is what I said we're going to do. Uh, so bring down the the two. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 5 is 7, times 1 is 7, minus 8 is negative 1, times 1 is a negative 1, minus 14 is a negative 15, times 1 is negative 15, uh, plus 6 is going to be give me a negative 9, times 1 is negative 9, plus 9 is 0. Oh, great. We found, we found a root on our very first try. That's wonderful. Um, so that gives us a factorization. f of x is going to factor as x minus 1 times... 2x to the 4th plus 7x cubed minus x squared minus 15x minus 9. And so when you look at things here, what changed, right? Our constant term is still, an, well, it switched from positive to negative 9. That doesn't make much of a difference. The leading coefficient is still a 2. So the list of potential rational roots doesn't change whatsoever. In terms of variation of signs, um, let's see here. We have now... One variation of signs, so that means there's one positive root left. That's not surprising because the options were either two or zero. We found one, so there has to be a second positive root. Okay. Um, it could actually be one, right? The fact that one worked once doesn't mean it can't work again. It could be a repeated root. So it is worth our time to check, uh, to check what happens if we try one. But now we have to use the quotient. Don't use the original one anymore. Once you find a remainder, always switch to the quotient. Two, seven, negative one, negative 15, and negative 9. So let's try 1 again there. And so doing that, we bring down the 2. 2 times 1 
is 2 plus 7 is 9 times 1 is 9 minus 1 is 8 times 1 is 8 uh, minus 15 is a negative 7 times 1 is negative 7 minus 9 is a negative 16. And so we do see there's a bunch of positive and negatives right there. So in terms of our rational roots, we've now exhausted one as a possibility. Uh, one is no longer going to work. So let's kind of record what we have here. Uh, so what's remaining is we could still have a negative one. That's a possibility. Uh, we have plus or minus three. We have plus or minus nine. We also have some fractions, plus or minus one half, plus or minus three halves, and plus or minus nine halves. These are possibilities still. So since one didn't work, uh, and you see it's off the list now. I'm going to erase these numbers and try this again. Once I have it recorded that one no longer is going to be, there's not a repeated root, I don't need any information from the synthetic division. Um, let's try, say, three now, the next one, because we need to find the next positive number. Um, if we try three, bring down the two. Two times three is six, plus seven is uh, 13 times three is gonna be 39, uh, minus one is gonna be 38. 38 times three is 114, we can see where this is going. Minus 15, you get 99. Three times 99 is gonna be 297, minus nine is gonna be 288. Um, you can see that all the numbers on the bottom are positive. This is an example of the upper bounds theorem, that this tells us that three is too big. So anything bigger than three needs to be taken off the list. So plus three doesn't work, but that also means that plus nine doesn't work either. Um, what about nine halves? Is that bigger than three? Nine halves would be four and a half. So yeah, nine halves doesn't work either. So in terms of po in terms of positive roots, we still have one half as a possibility and three halves as a possibility. So as much as we might not like it, um, it's worth checking one of these fractions. Um, and so which one is it? When I did one, I didn't get that one was an upper bound. So it so could be that something's bigger than one. So if I have to choose between one half and three halves, my inclination is, well, it needs to be less than three, but maybe bigger than one, probably bigger than one, not a guarantee yet though. So I'm gonna try this uh, using three halves. So what does it look like if we try three halves? So again, I'm gonna erase this since we now found we have an upper bound. See my potential rational roots right here. So let's try this again. Third try, we're gonna try three halves. That's what my gut tells me here. Bring down the two. Now this is just gonna be multiplication. So multiplication by fractions. Two times three halves is gonna give me a three. Three plus seven is equal to 10. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, 10 times three halves. Uh, notice that two goes into 10 five times. So you get three times five, which is a 15. Uh, 15 take away one is a 14. Oh, that's another even number, this is nice. Two goes into 14 seven times, three times seven is 21. 21 take away 15 is six, and two goes into six three times, three times three is nine. I went Bob's your uncle there. Negative nine plus nine is zero, so we found our root. That's wonderful. And so now let's look at the factorization. F of x then factors as x minus one. We then have x minus three halves as a root as a factor here. And then the other one, looking at the quotient here, you're gonna get two x cubed plus 10 x squared plus 14 x plus six. And so this gives us a factorization. And as much as we didn't like it, maybe, we have to, we have to accept that three halves was in fact a root. You can get fractions sometimes. Now look what happened here. You know, you have this x minus three halves. If you don't like fractions, get you're gonna like the next step here. Notice that if we look at the quotient here, two x cubed, 10x squared, 14x plus six. There's a, two things I wanna point out here. There's no variation of signs right here. The variation is zero. That means there's no more positive roots. But that matches up with what we saw originally. The original variation was two. We've now found our two positive roots. There's one and three halves. So there's no more positive roots. That affects things a lot. Also, notice that each and every one of these coefficients is positive, two, 10, 14, and six. We could factor out a common factor of two. If we did that, we would get two times x minus one times x minus three halves times x cubed plus five x squared plus seven x plus three. That's a, that's a critical observation here because that affects our rational roots test here. If we were to run the rational roots test on this guy right here, notice the potential rational roots are gonna be divisors of three, which there's no positive 
divisors left. So we want to be trying negative one and negative three. That's a lot better than six here because we there's going to be some things that we don't want to try. So we want to factor that thing out as possible. Also, if you don't like fractions, notice you could distribute the two onto the x and to the negative three halves here. And that would give us the factorization x minus one times two x minus three times x cubed plus five x squared plus seven x plus three. And so that's a pretty nice, fa nice factorization. And the factorization has no fractions in it whatsoever. What we see here is an example of something called Gauss's lemma. That when you factor a polynomial, which if it originally had integer coefficients, then the factorization can be done with integers as well. You don't need fractions. Because even though we got, a, we got three halves as a root, you were able to pull off a factor of two to kind of can't to clear out the denominators right here. It's like it's like Providence that provided for us. This is actually a result proven by Gauss here. So now we want to look for factors of, of our cubic quotient here. Uh, so we want to either negative one or negative three. Whichever one you prefer, don't matter. It's sort of a coin, a coin toss at the moment. Uh, so let's just try negative one. So take your coefficients one, five, seven, and three. Clearly that was way too long of a line. Let's try negative one here. Bring down the one. One times negative one is negative one plus five is four times negative one is negative four plus seven is three times negative one is negative three, which gives us, turns out negative one was a good guess right there. And so now we're ready to find our factorization here. So we're going to have f of x equals x minus one times two x minus three times x plus one. That was the factor we just did here. And then what's left over is you get x squared plus 4x plus 3, which that's a quadratic, and I noticed that factors of 3 that have to be 4 would be uh, 1 and 3, so I can factor this one more time. So just factor the quadratic, keep down the things I have. Once you have it to a quadratic, factor it how we have been doing it, in which case you're going to get x plus 3 and x plus 1. So it turns out it didn't matter which one you tried, negative 1 or negative 3, they would have both worked. Um, but also notice that x plus 1 shows up twice. So I'm going to actually write this as a repeated root. So you get x plus 1 squared. And so this gives me the complete factorization of f of x. It's x minus 1 times 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 squared times x plus 3. And so if we set this equal to 0, we can then solve this equation and get x equals 1, 3 halves, negative 1, and negative 3, just like the rational roots theorem told us it would be.